escalation of violence in the Middle East tonight. The U.S. and British militaries bomb more than a dozen sites in Yemen using Tomahawk missiles and fighter jets. The targets include logistical hubs for the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. President Joe Biden said the strikes are retaliation for attacks against ships in the Red Sea, a major world shipping channel. For more on this breaking story, we are joined by retired Marine Intelligence Officer, National Security Expert, and co-host of the Strat Podcast, Hal Kempfert. Hal, as always, thanks for being with me. Good to see you. Explain why this is such a major development. Well, Marla, this means that we are, we're basically engaging in major combat operations in that area. We've been trying to keep from expanding this, having this war get expanded to a regional uh, conflict, if you will. Uh, of course, this is really all based around uh, uh, Israel's uh, operations in Gaza, and uh, the Houthis are backed by the Iranians. The Iranians back the uh, Hamas um, uh, militants in Gaza. But what the Houthis have been doing along that strategic waterway is firing missiles and drones, 27 different strikes uh, across that area. And we gave them the last and final warning. The U.N. did the same. And now the U.S. and the U.K. are striking back using uh, fighter jets. We're using F-18s launched from the carrier Eisenhower and Tomahawk cruise missiles. And those are really big missiles. I have a little little experience with that and uh, and we're doing uh, basically hits along the entire region taking out where the uh, the drones and the anti-ship missiles the Houthis have are sourced from along with other targets associated with that. And now of course in the drone strikes in which this is a retaliation for there have been U.S. service members who have been injured have lives been lost? Not not well in this particular region no. Okay. Uh, there have been strikes against ships. Uh, they they actually captured a ship, very, uh, uh, very, uh, 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 very, you know, very uh, high profile capture of a ship where they took uh, mariners prisoner. But they have threatened the lives of mariners, and they have cut back dramatically global trade to that area. Fifteen percent mm. of global trade goes through the Suez Canal. They have decreased it by at least a third. Some would say closer to a half. And that's just not sustainable for the international economy. Now, of course, I mean, that's why we're bringing out the Tomahawks and the fighter jets, because to your point, that's why this is a major development. The concern, though, now is likely that Iran retaliating, striking back. How do you expect that to happen? Well, uh, that's a calculation. And uh, I heard General McKenzie, the, the recently retired uh, commander of U.S. Central Command, probably put it best. He, he kind of said, kind of went through it and weighed it, and he said, probably not. I think with the amount of forces that are arrayed out there and certainly the amount of pressure we're putting on Iran, it is unlikely that they will they will retaliate directly. Indirectly, uh, I would be looking towards Iraq, Syria, see what they do with their, uh, their basically their proxy Shiite militias. And I think uh, certainly the Houthis will try to uh, respond, but the question is how effective were our strikes? Hmm. If we took out a lot of their drones and a lot of their missiles, they may not have the means to respond in the way that their rhetoric would suggest. Let me ask you, this is all happening as Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin remains hospitalized at Walter Reed Medical Center. He just put out a statement about this airstrike. Nonetheless, he is still hospitalized. And let me, he, he says this, I just got this in. Today's coalition action sends a clear message to the Houthis that they will bear further costs if they do not end their illegal attacks. Now, again, this is all coming from him inside the hospital walls. How significant is that to our international national security, the fact that he is in a hospital bed? Well, certainly our, our system, the way we're set up with our chain of command, uh, doesn't, doesn't require the Secretary of Defense to actually be controlling what's going on or to be in his office in the Pentagon or some other command and control center. With that said, it does highlight the importance of the Secretary of Defense uh, if for any reason he's incapacitated or taken out of action, that he that, that he needs to make sure that not everything's depending on him, him actually giving a stamp of approval on it. And that, of course, goes back to the whole issue of his notification of when he was hospitalized, mm -hmm. his situation in the hospital. So uh, not essential, but it does bring a lot of questions up, and certainly Capitol Hill will be talking about it. Okay. Well, we appreciate you talking about it with us tonight at 6 o'clock. Hal Kempfert, thank you so much. Thank you, Marla. All right.